The battle for Castle Itter is easily one of the most bizarre battles of World War II. The Anschluss of 1938 saw the annexation of Austria by Nazi Germany. On a hill near the village of Itter, a castle known as Itter Castle or Schloss Itter, as it is called in German, was leased from its owner Franz Gruner in late 1940 by the German government. Heinrich Himmler had ordered SS Lieutenant General Oswald Pohl to seize the castle from its original owner on February 7th, 1943. Under the authority of the Nazis, the castle was turned into a prison camp by April 25th of 1943 and was placed under the administration of the Dachau concentration camp. The purpose of the newly created prison camp under the authority of Sebastian Weimar was to hold valuable French prisoners that the Germans could use to raise ransom money from the Allies. The high-ranking prisoners included the former French Prime Ministers Edouard Deladier and Paul Reynaud, the former Commanders-in-Chief Maxime Weygand and Maurice Gamelin, Charles de Gaulle's elder sister Mary Anne Calau, famous tennis player Jean Barotra, right-wing leader and closet French resistance member Francais de la Recroix, as well as trade union leader Leon Jaux. Also present were Eastern European prisoners detached from Dachau being used for maintenance and miscellaneous tasks. An imprisoned Yugoslav communist resistance member by the name Zoranimir Kchokovic left the castle on May 3rd, 1945 with the intention of performing an errand for Sebastian Weimar, the prison's commander. Chokovic brought a letter written in English seeking Allied assistance with the intention of giving the letter to the first American he came across. Just eight kilometers or five miles away was the town of Vargel, which was still occupied by German troops. Chukovic continued on up the Inn River Valley towards the city of Innsbruck. Chukovic eventually reached the outskirts of the city and encountered an advancing group of the 409th Infantry Regiment of the American 103rd Infantry Division of the U.S. 6th Corps and informed them of the prisoners at the castle. The group lacked the authority to launch a rescue mission on their own, but promised Chukovic that they would get an answer from headquarters in regards to such an operation on the 4th of May. A heavily armored rescue was launched at dawn of the next day, but was stopped by heavy shelling just past Jembach, about halfway to Eder. The shelling was then recalled by superiors for reaching too far into the territory of the U.S. 36th Division to the east. Out of the entire rescue party, only two jeeps of ancillary personnel were able to continue on. Chukovic failed to return. The former commander of Dachau, Edward Weiter, died on the 2nd of May under mysterious circumstances. Paul Renaud claims that Viter shot himself after drunkenly bragging about the executions he ordered at Dachau. Israeli historian, author, and journalist Tom Segev claims that Viter was killed by a fellow SS member, angry at his lack of ideological conviction. Viter was buried in an unmarked grave outside the castle without a ceremony. Sebastian Weimar, fearing that his end might be near as well, decided to abandon his post. The SS Totenkopf Band Guards left the castle soon after, and the prisoners then took control of the castle and armed themselves with the leftover weaponry. The castle prison leaders, oblivious to Chokovic's true intention, accepted an offer made by their Czech cook, Andreas Krobat, to ride his bicycle to Vargo on May 4th to find help. Krobat brought with him a note similar to that carried by Chokovic, his intention the same as Chokovic, and was successful in contacting the Austrian resistance in Vargo. Vorgel had recently been abandoned by the Wehrmacht, but had been reoccupied by the SS. Krobat was taken to Major Joseph Gangel, the commander of a group of disobedient Wehrmacht soldiers who had become a part of the Austrian resistance. Gangel stayed positioned in Vorgel to protect the city's citizens from SS troops who were firing at white or Austrian flags at the windows. Gangel was hoping the Americans would reach Vorgel so that his group could surrender to the Allies, but due to the current situation, he would have to reach the Americans instead. While this occurred, Captain Jack Lee led a reconnaissance unit of four Sherman tanks to the 23rd Tank Battalion, 12th Armored Division, of the U.S. 21 Corps, to Kufstein, located about 13 kilometers or 8 miles to the north. The tanks remained put. Meanwhile, Gangle requested relief from Jack, who was more than willing to provide, and so Lee launched a rescue mission with permission from the U.S. headquarters. Captain Lee went for a ride with Major Gangle and the Major's Kubel wagon left to scout out the castle. Lee left two of his tanks behind, restationing five more in supporting infantry from the recently arrived 142nd Infantry Regiment of the 36th. Lee was then forced to pull back the reinforcements when a bridge proved too feeble for the entire force to cross it, 
a task that would have to be completed twice. Lee decided to leave one of his tanks behind to guard the bridge. He continued on to be accompanied only by 14 American soldiers, Major Gangle, and a driver driving a truck carrying 10 former German artillerymen. Around 6 kilometers or 4 miles from the castle, Lee's force was able to eliminate a small dispatch of SS troops attempting to build a roadblock. Meanwhile, the French prisoners had requested that Kurt Siegfried Schrader, an SS officer that they had befriended in Itter while he was recovering from some wounds, take command of the Itter Defense Force. When Lee's rescue force arrived at the castle, the prisoners were obviously quite grateful, but disappointed with the small size of the force. Lee ordered the men under his command to take up defensive positions around the castle and had his tank, Bassat and Jenny, stationed at the main entrance. The French prisoners disobeyed Lee's order to take cover and instead chose to take up arms and fight alongside the American and Vermont troops. Later that night, the SS sent reconnaissance troops to scout out the castle for any weak points. On May 5th of the next morning, the SS sent a force of anywhere from 100 to 150 Waffen SS troops to attack the castle. The SS unit attacking the castle was the 17th SS Panzergrenadier Division, Gott von Berlichingen under the command of Oberführer Gorge Bachmann. The SS also had access to two 2 centimeter flak cannons. Gangle managed to phone the Austrian resistance leader in Vargel, Aloy Mayer. He did so to request reinforcements. Mayer could only spare two more German soldiers and a teenage Austrian resistance member by the name of Hans Waltel. The reinforcements quickly drove to the castle. The Sherman tank Jenny provided machine gun fire support against the oncoming infantry but was eventually destroyed by German 88mm gunfire. At the time of her destruction, Jenny was only occupied by a radio man attempting to repair Jenny's radio. The radio man was able to escape without injury. Word of the battle soon made its way to the 142nd, who then sent a decent sized relief force. Lee was unable to give the 142nd the specifics of the SS attack force, so he accepted tennis great Borotra's Heroic offered to vault the castle wall and run through the SS lines to deliver the information to the relief force. Borotra was successful. He requested a uniform and then joined the relief force as it made its way for the castle. Major Gangle was killed by a rifle bullet during the battle while trying to move former French Prime Minister Renaud out of the way of oncoming SS fire. Gangle was honored as an Austrian national hero, and even had a street in Vargol named after him. The relief force eventually arrived around 1600, just as the castle's defenders were firing down to their last rounds of ammunition, and the SS attackers were defeated, with some being killed, and most getting captured. Approximately 100 SS prisoners were captured. The newly freed French prisoners were then evacuated towards France later that evening and they eventually reached Paris on May 10th. Captain John C. Jack Lee Jr. received the Distinguished Service Cross for his role in leading the defense force at Castle Later. It is believed that Lieutenant Harry Boss, along with the rest of the defenders, fought with great courage. The battle for Castle Later is strange in the fact that not only was the battle fought after the death of the Fuhrer Adolf Hitler, but it is the only battle in which American soldiers and German soldiers of the Wehrmacht fought side by side as allies. It is also the last battle fought to this date over control of a medieval castle. This is the story of American troops and the German army joining together at last, fighting alongside French prisoners, an SS defector, and an Austrian resistance fighter against the Waffen-SS.